With the release of the Star Citizen 3.0 public test server containing the first three landable moons in the game, players have gotten their first taste of the scale of the world that Chris Roberts and Cloud Imperium games are building. But how big is it really, and how much would it cost to buy it all in real world money? G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Star Citizen with Mags. So with the recent land plots announcement, a question occurred to me. We know the play area of the moons of the PTU is big, impressively big, but exactly how big is it really? And more than that, with the ability to buy claim beacons, what is the smallest number of people that it would take to buy all of the current moons inside of the PTU? And more importantly, how much would all three moons cost in real money? So, to begin to answer that, the first thing I will need, of course, is the size of the moons. Unfortunately, this is not so easy to find. Official sources such as the Ark Star Map or the Patch Notes simply do not carry the exact size details of these bodies, or really any of their metrics at all. Other third-party sites that do have them listed, such as the My Radar app, have sizes listed that seem to be built on old information and do not match up with what we currently see inside of the PTU. So the only way to get an accurate measurement of the current size of the moons as they stand inside of the 3.0 PTU now is to measure them myself. Of course, that begs the question, how exactly do you measure the size of a moon? Well, there are actually two ways to do it, and I'll be doing both just to make sure I get my numbers right. The first is actually the most straightforward. Each moon has a navigational beacon. This beacon sits exactly in the center of the core of the moon, so by simply landing on the surface of the moon and measuring the distance from the beacon to your location, it will give you the moon's radius, the exact measurement you need to calculate all of the moon's other metrics. However, this is a test server, and a test server that contains a large number of bugs that are currently in the process of being squashed. So, to be sure the first measurement is correct, we really need to take a second measurement just to confirm the first one. Thankfully, we can do this as well. On the surface of the moons, there are outposts. These outposts have nav beacons, and these nav beacons are visible from any location around the moon, regardless of whether or not you have line of sight to it or not. So if we fly our ship to the exact opposite side of the planet to one of these outposts and then check the distance to that outpost, we get the diameter of the planet. Half the diameter is the radius, and if the radius matches the radius from the initial measurement, allowing for small variations due to terrain height differences on both sides of the planets, we have our measurement and confirmation that that measurement is accurate within acceptable margins. So having flown the trip to Daymar in my trusty Herald, landed and taken my measurements, how exactly did Daymar do? Well, Daymar has a diameter of 588.2 kilometers, a radius of 294.1 kilometers, and a circumference of 1840.8 kilometers. This leads us to a surface area of 1,086,925.84 square kilometers. This is a fair old chunk of land, but we ain't done yet. So, leaving Daymar, heading quickly over to Cryastro to refuel the Herald, because I do not want to run out of fuel in the middle of this flight. Next target is Yella. So, having picked our outpost and travelled to the opposite side of the moon to that outpost, landed and taken our measurements, Yella comes in with a diameter of 626 kilometres, a radius of 313 kilometres, and a circumference of 1,966.63 kilometres. This gives us a surface area of 1,231,114.76 square kilometres. So, rough numbers give or take, Yella is roughly 150,000 square kilometers larger than Daymar by comparison. This gives you an idea on exactly how big these worlds actually are, and we've still got a third one left to measure. So, two down and one to go, we come in on Selen. Now, Selen is the smallest of the three moons, and it's the one that is closest to a representation of our own moon in terms of its build-up and makeup. Salen comes in with a diameter of 520 kilometers, a radius of 260 kilometers, and a circumference of 1,633.62 kilometers. This gives us a surface area of 849,486.65 square kilometers, so significantly smaller than the previous two moons, both Daymar and Yella. 
So from here we add together the surface area for all three moons, which gives us a grand total surface area of 3,167,521.25 square kilometers. This is pretty massive. Except it's really not once you actually put it in comparison to real world metrics. So, real world metrics, let's talk about our moon. Diameter, 3,474 kilometers. Radius, 1,737 kilometers. Circumference, 10,913.9 kilometers. And a surface area of 37,914,863.86 kilometers. This means that the three moons of the PTU combined only total out to be 8.1% of the total surface area of our own moon. Now, that being said, the PTU is scaled. Everything is supposed to be one-fourth size. So if we multiply the surface area of our three moons by four, this brings us up to 12,670,085 square kilometers. And again, compare this against our actual moon, well, we still come up a little bit to the short side. The three moons combined would total only 32.43% of the total surface area of the moon. So, in terms of moons, these three are not big, no matter which way you look at it. But how much are they worth? Now, on the initial release of the PTU, this would have been impossible to calculate. However, during the anniversary sales, Cloud Imperium Games has put up for sale the option of pre-ordering land claim beacons. Now, these beacons will allow players, once the mechanic goes live on release of Star Citizen, to travel out to the landable worlds, place these beacons down, and actually claim for themselves a chunk of land of a set size that is attached to the beacon. Now, these beacons come in two sizes. You have 4 by 4 kilometers which of course gives you 16 square kilometers as an option, and you have 8 by 8 kilometers, which gives you 64 square kilometers as an option. Now, as a player, you can buy up to 10 of each, as I currently understand it. There are limitations to the number. And of course, these beacons come with a cost. So your 4 by 4 kilometer claim beacons come in at $50 US before tax. Your 8 by 8 kilometer beacons come in at $100 US before tax. So again, let's play with the basic maths. 4 by 4 kilometers is 16 square kilometers times 10 is 160 square kilometers times $50 per unit. We're talking $500. 8 by 8 kilometer plot is 64 square kilometers, which times by 10 comes in at 640 square kilometers at $100 per unit, which comes in at $1,000. The total area that a single player is capable of buying is 800 square kilometers of a planet's surface that is 10 of each beacon type at a grand total of 1,500 US dollars before tax. So we finally come to the two questions that I asked at the beginning of the video. What is the minimum number of citizens using 800 square kilometers as your base buy-in that it would take to buy all three moons currently in the PTU? And how much would these three moons cost? Well, as it currently stands, it would only take 3,960 citizens to buy all three moons currently in the PTU. But it would come at the cost before tax of 5,939,100 US dollars. So there you have it. That's how much the worlds in Star Citizen's PTU are currently worth. The combined total of the surface area of all three moons is just short of 6 million before tax. Now, it doesn't really matter which country you go to, there will be sales taxes. I've checked against Australia, I've checked against Germany and the US, and all of these come somewhere in the vicinity of around $7 million once you incorporate tax into the calculation. So there you have it, the true size and the true value of the current land within the boundaries of Star Citizen. Now, as for my personal opinions, do I really like the idea of people buying the surface of planets? In all honesty, I really don't care. My personal opinion is it's kind of a bit silly, mainly because, well, this is Star Citizen. It's a game about space, it's about exploration, it's about traveling, it's about doing something between the stars. And the first thing people are going to do is buy a plot of land that they're going to have to manage, defend, and, well, really stay attached to for their entire time within Star Citizen, preventing them from being able to get out amongst those stars. Personally, I'm going to be in an exploration ship out as far away from the core worlds of the UEE as I possibly can be, exploring strange new worlds, seeking out new and interesting items, and to be perfectly honest, making my money by stealing everything that's not bolted down. 
Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. If you check the video description down below, you'll find links to my Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel. If you're interested in Star Citizen, you'll find a link to my referral code to create an account for Star Citizen. The initial account creation is free, so you don't have to worry about any money up front. And if you are already a citizen of Star Citizen and you are looking for an organization, The Unprofessionals is currently recruiting. The Unprofessionals is my own organization, and it is running right now. So anyways, until next time, remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you around the verse.